Oksana, uh, in your presentation, uh, you are talking about a constitutional majority. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there might be const constitutional changes uh, in the next years? Yeah, I think it is possible because one of the things that uh, Poroshenko in particular, and it looks like most of the Maidan parties support this, is to have um, administrative reform decentralization, right? And that's something that's on the agenda and that would require changes in the constitution. So I think we may very well see, um, you know, probably after some period of negotiations, at least a proposal to decentralize. So um, I see that as likely. Whether or not it will be supported, I think that's a different question because obviously that's a huge reform, right? And somebody uh, is going to gain and somebody is going to lose from this process, right? And the question would be, for example, if the central elites, how really, are they really going to willing delegate a lot of power to the, to the regions or is it going to be more pro forma, right? So, um, I mean, in brief, I think it's now possible. I think I, I expect to see at least a proposal to this effect, whether or not it will pass and become, you know, an amendment to the constitution and what exactly shape it will take. I don't think we'll really know until we see like a draft and negotiations over it so I would say that mm -hmm. yeah yeah because uh, this majority we called I mean you call it constitutional but we can call it pro-western also what might what might be the divisions inside this majority right right um, yes I think we can definitely expect to see some personality politics which has been sort of feature of Ukrainian politics for a long time like competition between you know uh, leaders of these parties I think that could be one thing right um, and then I think we, we should expect to see and that might be a healthy thing I mean we should expect to see a lot more kind of disagreements about the specifics of the reforms right because if you are say reforming energy sector right or any kind of aspect of the economy then various economic interests you know would be um, you know, as if say everybody agrees that the Ukrainian economy needs to be reorient reoriented toward Europe more than perhaps it has been before right so that would not be maybe the issue of disagreement but how exactly do you do it which sectors to privilege right um, like I think we can expect you know disagreements over the specifics and I think that would be a healthy you know kind of introduction of a healthy political competition in Ukraine, that, which hopefully would be based around issues over these, you know, policies. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, I mean, the, when we say constitutional majority, uh, it, for it to be constitutional majority, all the parties, the post-Maidan parties, would need to be counted in, and that includes Leshko's radical party, right? Mm -hmm. And um, that's really much more of a loose cannon. I mean, we're calling it, like, I mean, I put it in the pro-Western category simply because it's, like, anti-Russian, right? And kind of generally supported the Maidan. But, you know, Leshko is really, you know, a populist, right? He's not kind of um, the politician that we would maybe say is a European type politician. Um, there are some allegations that, you know, he's been funded and supported by the oligarchs. You know, some people in his party uh, uh, could be considered as belonging to the radical right. So I think um, the behavior of this party in particular is, you know, in a way in a bit of a loose cannon. I mean, if indeed, if these kind of more conspiratorial explanations are correct and he's really a project of some, you know, financial interest group, right, we might actually see him not voting, say, with other parties for various, you know, types of reforms, but being more of a populist and kind of bring an element of destabilization and then it might be quite difficult to pass any legislation that would, would indeed require 300 plus votes, right, for the, uh, right, so I think that's also something we should keep in mind, the role of Leshko. Okay. Uh, you're working on Ukraine uh, as a scholar for a long time now, yeah. um, but this year is a special year. How um, you live this year as a citizen as a person right, right, <laughs> right. well i think that's um you know i mean I'm, i do work on ukraine but i'm also a citizen of ukraine and um, i felt maybe for the first time in a long time and maybe ever that i really had a choice like in this parliamentary election when i went to vote myself i went to new york mm -hmm. to vote and i voted for some homage but i kind of thought about it like you know maybe i could vote for Hrytsenko, right like i mean poroshenko and yatsenyuk were also conceivable to me right so i really felt that like I wanted to actually watch investigative reporting about these parties and kind of try to make my decision, you know, um, as an informed citizen, feeling that I had a choice. And I think, that, I mean, I would like to hope that many Ukrainians felt that way too. And that I think would be, you know, a big kind of plus uh, coming out of this year. On the other hand, as we're talking about on the panel, people in the East were probably in the worst situation maybe than they were before, because if they didn't like either the idea of communists or the Rump Party of Regions, they didn't really have like a good choice, right? So in a way, what I'm hoping might happen in Ukraine going forward that there will be kind of different structuring of the party landscape instead of these like kind of pro-Russian, anti-Russian 
loosely dimension as the, the main divide of Ukrainian politics, we would really see more kind of issue-based parties, right? So if, say, people in the East, uh, for example, if we know from the polls, have significant concerns about socioeconomic right, support, so there maybe would be like center-left or left party that would, um, you know, pr primarily would present itself as like a socialist party as opposed to, you know, for Slavic unity or for, you know, reuniting with Russia or kind of Russian foreign policy orientation, right? And hopefully then, you know, we would have kind of healthy political spectrum in Ukraine of political parties and citizens would feel, no, no matter where they fall on the political spectrum, that they have a decent choice when election comes around. Okay. So. Thank you, Oksana. Sure. Yeah. Thanks.